Greetings. Good afternoon from my home in Manassas, northeastern Virginia, close to Washington, D.C. And I wanted to catch up on the vlog with uh, one particular point that I've been discussing all over the place, but haven't really recorded a video, so I wanted to put it down here. Uh, quite a few people have been asking me about where AI is headed, and there's all kinds of factors here. They're usually referring to generative AI. And one of the problems that we've got is that there are all kinds of existential threats facing generative AI. I don't mean existential threats that AI puts before humanity. I mean ways that threats by which generative AI might cease to exist or shrink drastically or translate into something very, very different. So really quickly, here's my list right now. Uh, the first is that there is no business model for generative, higher education, for generative uh, AI. There are companies that are pouring billions and billions of dollars into the technology, such as Microsoft and Google, uh, Amazon and Apple, and of course, OpenAI. And so far, they're not making it back as far as we can tell. Uh, when we take a look at the output, uh, we see that it takes a lot of computation, very expensive computation to produce uh, the uh, data sets and to produce the training sets and to produce the results and to run the services. And they're just not making it back. Uh, you think about someone like OpenAI, where, or say Claude, where they're selling subscriptions. I don't think they're making enough money to pay back their expenses. And somebody like Microsoft or Google are probably not selling a lot of Microsoft Office or um, Google Cloud Storage sites simply because people are now attracted to it by the presence of generative AI. So unless we can find out uh, some business model that makes sense, this is a major threat. And I, I, the people who would enact this threat would be venture capital uh, and would be the people running the investments who have been pouring out a lot of money and are now hoping to make something back. The second threat uh, has to do with the hallucination problem. Uh, the hallucination problem is a deep one. We haven't cured it yet. Uh, there have been all kinds of approaches, including RAG, Google's double check, uh, there's some interesting uses of having generative AI check generative AI, but so far this is an issue that persists. Now for a lot of uses, this isn't much of a problem. Uh, you think about generative AI as an assistant, you think about it as a cheerleader or as a collaborator, and in most cases it's fine, especially if the user is attentive and skilled in the field and can actually make corrections, or where detail-oriented mistakes aren't really a problem. Uh, but in fields like medicine, for example, or, uh, well, fill in the blank, this can be a real problem. And until we fix this, this is going to limit generative AI's ability to make headway in the world. Uh, another problem uh, has to do with culture. That generative AI has a lot of hype behind it, it's very exciting, it's got a lot of attention. But it's also very unpopular. It's received a great deal of anti-hype, of criticism. There have been bad stories. There have been all kinds of problems that uh, generative AI faces. And it polls badly. If you take a look at Gallup, if you take a look at um, all kinds of polling, you see that the majority of Americans think that it is not positive, that they think it is negative. They think it's going to hurt people. Um, and it's possible that we will just see that continued cultural resistance grow until people decide not to use it. Uh, and that can play out in all kinds of ways, including just personal taste, personal style, but institutions making decisions, um, contract negotiations, all kinds of stuff. Uh, one more thing to think about, another existential threat that generative AI may face, has to do with regulation. So this could come from cities or states. More likely, I'm looking at uh, national governments as well as transnational governments like the EU. I mean, so far, a lot of them are really happy with AI. They see it as a uh, potential golden goose to lay a lot of golden eggs, and they really want to do. They really want to take advantage of that and uh, milk that for as much as possible. If they can mangle the metaphor, uh, but at the same time, they're facing pressures to bring this under control. There are a lot of pressures about deep fakes, specifically of deep fakes, pornographic deep fakes of women. There's a lot of concern about hallucinations, as I mentioned before. There's also fear of deep fakes occurring in other domains, namely phishing for hacking, uh, as well as politics. And we can also think of other causes that come up 
as generative AI makes its way into the world. We can see different industries lobbying governments in order to restrict it. So I, I want to put those out there right now because if we're looking in education to figure out how to train and prepare students for a world where generative AI is a major factor, it's possible that generative AI won't be a major factor if any of these existential threats come to bear. Um, I've written some about this. I'll be writing more, but I'm curious to see what you think. Thanks. Hope you're all well. Bye-bye.